Gentlemen, ladies, ladies and gents, it is 4.29 in the a.m. And on the clock on my computer, on the window side, says 12.41, because I have it on a four-hour um, shutdown. Ladies and gentlemen, I started this video, the one I'm putting up now, at 6.30, 7 o'clock last night, before I went to sleep, because I went to sleep about 8 told you I was tired in that video um, I don't I don't stay up to 12 and one o'clock and two o'clock now I will wake up in the middle of the night but from eight to four nine to five is eight hours eight to four is eight hours I've had eight hours of sleep people I'm up at 4 40 uh, 4 30 in the morning just took the dogs out for a walk because they needed it and this video still isn't uploaded. This video is under an hour long. It's about 58 minutes long. And it's taken over four hours. This is what Google is doing some of the videos. They don't do it to all of them. <laughs> this video took 20 minutes and it's 12 minutes long. Okay, the one all crimes are commercial, 20 minutes. But the video, the greatest arbitration of video of all time that video took eight hours to upload eight hours again google so let's talk for a minute shall we don't don't worry about what google's doing not y'all know me i'm gonna persevere now if you guys are not aware of the word persevere you need to get familiar with that word that should be your your word for 2022 this should be the year of perseverance everybody should be persevering no matter what comes up you should be forging ahead you should let, not let a single obstacle get in your way you should be the barrier breaker this year so we're going to talk about a couple of things we're going to talk about the last three videos we're going to put or well, the last four videos we're going to put those in a nutshell we're going to show why this man said what Bradley Christopher Stark did was put a piece of the puzzle in that we had not considered. Ladies and gentlemen, for years, the system has been doing people wrong. And many of us knew that the system was incorrect. We knew that the system was not functioning the way it was designed to function. We knew that they had made alterations that... It looked like a legal system, just like uh, prima facie. It looked like the law, just like prima facie. See, remember, prima facie is the appearance of, but they changed something. Prima facie and presumption of law are just proofs of deja vu. You remember the video I did talking about the matrix and the current matrix is talking about deja vu, how everything looks like it's legitimate. How on Google, if you speak against anything that they don't like, they will give you strikes and ban you. Anything that they don't like. Well, they claim it harms the public. Excuse me. They claim it harms the public. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Google has an algorithm that if your video is for mature audiences, look, they do movies all the time that talk about things that the government doesn't appreciate. They do movies all the time that talk about things that the government doesn't appreciate. The news covers the exact same stories, but the news always gives you the side of the story, the narrative that they want you to hear. Again, deja vu. They change something in the matrix. That usually happens when they change something in the matrix. Go ahead and look at the matrix and see how the cat is named deja vu <laughs> they named the cat deja vu because of what neil said in the first matrix they named the cat deja vu the, we know the cat's name wasn't deja vu but the so-called analysts decided to name the cat deja vu interesting <sighs> so let's talk about it shall we Ladies and gentlemen, again, we had the, as I mentioned in the last video, that isn't up yet, but will be up in an hour and 38 minutes. 
we had what was known as the commercial lien process. Now, a lot of you didn't know about the commercial lien process back in the 90s, uh, but we knew about the commercial lien process and we were processing the commercial lien process. Ladies and gentlemen, when we processed the commercial lien process, we weren't getting any responses. Do you, you all don't understand. It was the commercial lien process that started the whole UCC lien. That was the commercial lien process. That's why I referred to it in that video and tell you, go ahead and follow the procedure. It is legal. You see, the only thing they changed with the Prison Litigation Reform Act, PLFR, and PLFA, the Prison Litigation Reform Act, that's where they say you do a UCC against somebody, you could go to jail. Well, if you do a UCC, and it's a frivolous UCC, in other words, you don't have a reason for putting a lien on somebody, you could go to jail. But if you have a reason, if you have a legitimate claim, what's a legitimate claim? The administrative process is a legitimate claim. If you don't believe me, look at what the courts do. Do they not send you a notice to appear in court? They send you a notice, right? You got to appear in court. Here's a summons. Here's a subpoena. You got to give us documents. And you don't respond to the subpoena. Do they not send you a notice of default? Hey, you didn't show up in court. We're issuing a warrant for your arrest. So they send you a notice of fault, opportunity, not opportunity. Oh, they don't give you an opportunity to cure. They don't tell you you got an opportunity to cure. All you got to do is show up in court and the warrant goes away. No. What they do is they send you a notice of fault, opportunity, nothing. Notice of intent. We gonna arrest your mother if you don't bring it in this court. They're doing the administrative process, people. Every single day the administrative process happens to you. You owe taxes? Hey, you owe us some money. This is a debt. Give us our money. And you don't respond? Hey, you're in default. We gonna send your stuff to collections. That's our intent. We're noticing you learn default. Bye-bye. Administrative process, motherfucker. That's what they're doing to you. It's all administrative process. All administrative process. Hey, you just bought this TV from us. You promised to pay us $4,000 for this TV. Yeah, we know the TV ain't only worth $200, but you promised to pay $4,000. You gonna pay us, mother... Oh, you're not gonna pay? All right. You got 30 days. Hey, 30 days up. Where's our money? Oh, you ain't gonna give it to us? All right, you're in default. We send you to collections. We're going to garnish your wages. Ladies and gentlemen, it's all the administrative process. You give a person notice. They don't pay attention. You send them a notice of default and a notice of intent. Go ahead and look. I, I, I've already created the notice of fault and notice of intent. One document. It's on salimited.com under the contracts. Everything's already done for you. Instead of doing the commercial lien document, we put it all in one contract. You see, that's what Bradley Christopher Stark did. When I said he found the missing piece, we couldn't enforce our documents. You couldn't enforce your document. We couldn't enforce our documents. Why your documents took an hour? Well, you know, because it, it, it was a long document. So we had to figure out how to enforce our documents. <laughs> and Bradley, Christopher Stark, the only one to figure it out. That's why I give him credit. I told you, I've been doing the commercial lien documents since the end of 1998, all the way to uh, 2004. That's when I was processing all my commercial lien documents. And when I say commercial lien, I was doing all the UCC stuff. All you got to do is type in my name in California. You see, I got all kind of stuff in there. Did the whole process, all the documents and everything against the hospital and everything. But I couldn't enforce that stuff, y'all. Not until now. Why? Because, ladies and gentlemen, the reason why the arbitration process is so unique what Bradley Christopher Stark did, we don't need to worry about the court saying it's frivolous or valid or invalid. The reason why they cannot come after SAA is because they're judges. All of the arbitrators on SAA are judges. 
None of them are colluding or conspiring with anyone. But that's what they want to claim. Ladies and gentlemen, you can bring a claim of conspiracy against the judge, but if you ain't got no proof that they're actually breaking a law, then you just need to shut up. And that's what's going on here. But it's okay. Why? Because it's not about the arbitrator. It's about the principal. What's the principal? Well, that's the person who's in charge of a school of students. And he's the one who is in charge of the teachers. And he keeps everything organized. Yes, that's the principal. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the same thing with law. The foundation of law keeps all the children, the little laws, organized. Statutes, regulations, codes, foundation. What's the foundation? The supreme law of the land. See, those little laws, well, they can't run amok. Oh, no, they can't start destroying all the other institutions. Yeah, laws are institutions, ladies and gentlemen. Every law is in an institution. Regulations are in an institution. That's why it's called the Federal Regulation Act. Codes are an institution. That's why they're called penal or civil. Those are their institutions. They all go to school. That's why lawyers have to go to learn about them. They go to an institution to learn about these students. They're all students of law. Prima facie, mere parents. Then you have the supreme law, the greatest institution of them all, the university of all universities, the Bill of Rights. Now, the Bill of Rights, man, that's where all the advanced students go. That's right, Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights, that's your Illuminati and your Freemason. They control all the other little laws, your codes, your regulations, your ordinances, your statutes. They control all of them. And because they control all of them, sometimes the students like to go out on their own and they like to create their own little groups. They like to create their own little fraud. They like to create their own little Bernie Madoffs, Ponzi schemes. Well, all statutes and codes are Ponzi schemes, ladies and gentlemen, because it requires you to believe in them in order for them to exist. That's the matrix. Now, can we prove that statutes are not law? We don't have to. We can just type that in casetext.com. Statutes are not law. And we use the case law where the judges say that statutes are not law. They say they're only prima facie. So then now we got to take the word prima facie, look it up, and we find out it's just a mere appearance. Well, just because something appears to be doesn't make it is. You know, my mama saw a ghost the other day, and she, she said, man, that looked like grandpa. That wasn't grandpa. That was one of them demons. But my mom, my grandma believed it was grandpa. And there she is. She she talks to him every single night. Yeah, they talk about all kind of stuff. But my grandpa, she tell me some of the stuff they talk about. My grandpa ain't never talk about no stuff like that. If my grandpa is alive after he died, then my grandpa would know everything. Well, how come he asking her questions? How come he ain't explaining to her what she need to do and making things better for her and making her rich? So she can walk around saying, I'm rich, but she ain't saying that. So my, my grandmama being misled by this stupid system, by the appearance of what is a reality. Ladies and gentlemen, stop being misled. Let's show you that the statutes are not real. Under the Code of Federal Regulations, that's right. What's a regulations? Regulators, mount up. Ladies and gentlemen, a regulation helps to regulate things. Helps to put things in order. Does it put everything in order? No, only the things for which it has jurisdiction. Well, how does a regulation get jurisdiction? By submission. Submission? Yeah, it's called acquiescence via consent, via assent, via conduct, via performance, via, V-I-A, via. Man, I had some Viagra. Yeah, that stuff didn't work for me, though. Mm -mm. I kept taking that stuff. And it gave me a tic-tac. And I, I couldn't understand it. I was like tic tac all the time. Oh, that's tic tac No, I was tic tac -ing. That's Viagra. It's just like a tic-tac. It's just the same size of a tic-tac. And I just sat up there and just put them in a tic-tac bottle. And I just popped those things like tic-tacs. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, do not mind him. He's got some issues. But anyway, 27 
CFR, Code of Federal Relations 7211, says that all crimes are commercial. Did you know that even murder is a commercial crime because it interferes with commerce? Anything that interferes with the revenue laws, commerce is revenue. Anything that interferes with the revenue laws is a commercial crime. Ladies and gentlemen, as stated in the video, and this is what we weren't saying clearly to people, a commercial commerce crime must have a commercial remedy. Just like a criminal act must provide a criminal remedy. If I file a criminal complaint, there has to be a criminal remedy. Somebody has to be prosecuted. Somebody has to be threatened with the liability associated with the act. I have to prove that the person violated my right criminally, and then they, if I prove it, get to go and suffer penalty. Well, a commercial crime, the only penalty for a commercial crime, pay attention, the only penalty for a commercial crime, ladies and gentlemen, is commercial. You cannot have death as a penalty for a commercial. You can't get the death penalty for a commercial crime, but people don't understand that. You cannot get the death penalty for a commercial crime. It's a commercial crime. So they're not putting the human to death. No, they're putting the commercial criminal to death. So how do you undo a commercial crime? Ladies and gentlemen, we keep telling you there's a process out there whereby you get to create tax credits. You create them, the government issues them. You create them by giving the government your consent, giving the government your word that you're going to forgive that commercial debt or commercial crime. Because that's what you're alleging. You're alleging that someone has committed a commercial crime against you. Well, the government doesn't want to have to prosecute all commercial crimes. You know how bombarded the government would be if they had to prosecute all commercial crimes? If everybody went to court, the court's are already crying that they got too many cases, that their caseload is too much. It's taken years for people to get cases to go through the courts. So didn't the IRS tell you, pay attention to the last video, didn't the IRS tell you, pay attention to the last video, didn't the IRS tell you, pay attention to that last video that's just going up that I just pointed out, that you don't have to go to court? That's right, it says it right there on your website. Well, haven't the so-called gurus over the past 30 years been telling you to stay out of the courts? You don't have to go to court. Well, even the IRS says you don't have to go to court to get justice. I don't have to go to court to get justice. Don't have to go to court to get justice. Go ahead and look in the Constitution and see where there is anything called a court. Go ahead and look at the First Amendment, Second Amendment, Third Amendment, Fourth Amendment, Fifth Amendment, Sixth Amendment, Seventh Amendment, Eighth Amendment, Ninth Amendment, Tenth Amendment. None of those say anything about a court. Go ahead. It does talk about have a right to a trial by common law jury in the Seventh Amendment. It says no one shall be tried, but it doesn't say anything about a court where a judge judicial branch of government see the constitution doesn't mention a judicial branch of government it does mention executive branch because it does say about a standing military well the executive branch handles the military it's not a foreign entity but because the constitution uses the word shall defend against because it uses the word against or from it assumes and presumes that it means the military can't be on U.S. soil. That's why the military is its own sovereign territory, because of the presumption. Because the courts are attempting to interpret what the original intent was. But don't worry about that. We're not talking about that right now. We're just letting you know that from the very beginning, you didn't have to go to court to get justice. You see, the preamble says, we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, how do you form a more perfect union? By establishing justice. Oh, so the people establish justice, not the court. 
No, that's why the courts say they administer justice. There's nothing in the Constitution granting the courts the authority to administer justice. Nothing in the Constitution, but because it talks about establishing justice. Okay? To establish justice and ensure and promote the general welfare and the so-called domestic tranquility. Oh, I want to be amongst the domestics. Well, not in that sense, because they done changed the whole idea of what a domestic means. They make the domestic being part of federal government one of them federal franchises. They did that in the 1800s, 1871, February 21st under the 1871 Act. You go ahead and look at it. Thomas Clark Nelson told y'all. <sighs> Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Again, the gurus have been telling you guys for decades, stay out of the courts. You don't have to go to court. They even tell you, I don't go to anybody's court. They tell you they just do everything through paper or administrative. They've been telling you this for years. They just haven't been explaining why. Because the administrative process is just as valued and valid as the judicial process. Because all the judicial process is is an administrative proceeding, administrative process. Now, don't go into court and say this is just an administrative proceeding. Don't go into court saying that. That, that, ain't, that, that, ain't, that ain't what this is meant for. You don't go in there saying this is an administrative proceeding. You don't do that because if you don't know exactly what you're talking about, and don't sit up there and say, because Eon said in his video, don't, don't do that. You have to know what you know. Many of you don't know. You think you know because you've read some book. You listen to some video. Ladies and gentlemen, I told you, I don't read books, especially books written by one person. No, if I'm going to take some information to heart, it better be several people authoring the same book, putting their reputations on the line. You see, these people didn't go to school and do all of that work and gain all of those reputations only to just put their name and associate it with a lie. That ain't the way things go. Well, anyway, encyclopedias or per, uh, peer reviews, those type of things, I follow those. But today you gotta be careful because there are a lot of doctors signing on to a lot of papers, and if you don't read it, you won't understand that the paper is literally them agreeing to nothing because they're canceling out their agreement. Then you got the courts where they do the oath that nullifies. Whew, man, that stupid oath that nullifies where they think they can cancel their oath, they can't. You cannot cancel an oath, ladies and gentlemen. Go back and look at the scriptures where oaths comes from. That's where the laws on oaths comes from. Man can't make up their law of oath. The one who took the first oath, the one who gave the first promise, is the one who controls that because he created it. He has the patent. Pay attention. They don't get to remake the law. They don't get to remake the law of oaths. Oaths have to be carried out. What if you swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but truth, so help you God, on a witness stand, and then right after that you take a silent oath? A silent oath. They'll ignore you, won't they? Oh, I took a silent oath. Oh, no, the same oath that you take. You know the, the oath that nullifies? You, you can't do that. They'll tell you. Go ahead and try it and see what happens. They will not let you do that the same way they can't do it. See, the very first promise? The very first promise is, hey, every tree of this garden you can eat from. But that tree right there, that's mine. Don't touch my tree, because if you touch that tree, I promise you, you're going to die. That, that's what the very first promise was. If you eat from my tree, I give you my word, you will die. That's the very first promise. That's the very first oath. An oath is a promise, ladies and gentlemen. And that's why the scriptures say, Isaiah, the 55th chapter, and Matthew's the 5th chapter, Hey, better that you give a vow and you pay than you give a vow and do not pay. So I think you shouldn't vow at all, so keep your mouth shut. That's what it says. Don't vow. Don't give oaths. That way you won't be obligated. But these judges take an oath. Well, once you take the oath, you can't take it back. 
That's why that's why he says don't 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 swear by the earth, don't swear by the sea, don't swear by the, the heavens, don't swear by anything. Let your yes mean yes and your no no. See, they can't take back their oath. They don't control that. But this is what they do because it's an appearance. Look, to put this in a nutshell, some of you guys who don't believe in scripture, doesn't you don't have to believe in it. You just have to understand it. What? You don't have to believe in scripture. You just have to understand it because that's the foundation of their so-called laws. Let me let me let me let me let me see if I can point it out to you real quick. Jesus said in John the 8th chapter verse 44, he was talking to the religious law students known as the Pharisees. He said, "Hey, you ignorant people are from your father, the devil." told them that they were sons of Satan, Illuminati, Freemason. He says, and you wish to do the will of your father. That one was a murderer when he began. He was taking people's lives, taking people's livelihood when he began because he couldn't stand anywhere near the truth says he is a liar and he is the father inventor of the lie he told the very first lie he added the word not to a statement is it not so that god has said you must not eat from every tree of the garden you must not eat from every tree of the garden he know he says you can eat from every tree of the garden but don't touch my tree he didn't say you can't eat from every tree of the garden that was the first lie First lie ever recorded in history, in existence. Nobody else can document another lie ever recorded. Go ahead. Go ahead. Any other documentation of a lie that predates that one? You can't find it. Oh, no. Well, Satan lied to himself when he thought of the situation. No, he didn't lie to himself. He knew exactly what he was doing. So you can't even go with that technicality. So, ladies and gentlemen, when Jesus said their father was the devil, now you know who runs their system. Their system is patterned after him. He created the first matrix. He created the first lie. See, that's all a matrix is, is a lie, ladies and gentlemen. Go back and look at the movie. The movie is all about a lie and people waking up to the truth, the reality as to what's really going on. Well, Satan created the system. That's why Jesus says Satan is the ruler of this world. That's why he says the ruler of this world has been judged and will be cast out. There will be no remaking of this matrix. He will get an opportunity to try again one last time. And then he will be destroyed. Then there will be no more matrices. It will all be reality from that point on. See, that's what the scriptures promises. So if you don't understand the matrix, I tried to tell everybody, if you pay attention, the matrix is patterned after the scriptures. It is not patterned after what you refer to as reality. Because your reality is not the same reality as scripture. But the matrix, the people who put the matrix together and the powers that be, understand what's going on in scripture. They're not stupid. Let's continue, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, at that point, after putting up the video that all crimes are commercial, let's show you the sequence of orders so that you get it. Because I keep telling people, my videos are sequential. Now it's going to say an hour and 10 minutes. It just said an hour and 38 minutes, almost 20 minutes ago. 56 minutes. 56! All right, ladies and gentlemen, constitutional challenges. Did you know that, ladies and gentlemen, if their laws violate the principles of the Constitution, it is illegal? Well, all of their statutes violate the principles of the Constitution. Because the Constitution says that government can make no laws that abridges your rights to your freedom. See, it, it, notice what it says, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom to peacefully assemble. Those are all right to freedom. Freedom! Okay? The First Amendment secures your right to liberty. That's the First Amendment. Everybody, freedom of the press, freedom of the, it's all freedom. Freedom of the right to practice religion. It's all freedom. The First Amendment is the right to freedom. You have the right to be free of all of those incumbences. But you didn't realize that, did you? 
you didn't realize the First Amendment is the I was free, mother. I was free. I, I sure is. Thank you, master. I was free. So all of that slavery junk, ladies and gentlemen, that was illegal from the very beginning because the Declaration of Independence already had it pegged. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. That's why the Supreme Court was ruling that black men were only one-fifth of a man. They weren't a whole man because the Declaration of Independence held that all men are created equal. That is the Equal Protection of Rights Clause. And endowed by their creator, even if they were one-fifth of a man, which no man would have the ability and or the authority to judge. Why? Well, because two things of likeness can't judge each other. You can't have a Mercedes-Benz judging a Datsun. A Mercedes-Benz has no authority to judge another car. That's like a dog judging whether or not a hyena is a canine. Dog, the dog doesn't have the right to do that. That's not the dog's authority. They don't have the jurisdiction. Well, one man cannot judge another because they're both men. One woman cannot judge another because they're both women. One woman cannot judge a man because they're both human. One homo sapien cannot judge another homo sapien because they're both human. Do you understand? You need to be superior to judge. None of you are superior to another. You are all equal. That's why Jesus told his disciples, you are all brothers. Stop calling people father. But people go to church all the time calling some idiot father. The very same idiot who claims to be following what Jesus said is allowing people to call him father when he said, don't do it. Matthews, what was what, that Matthew 22nd chapter, 23rd chapter? Go look it up. He said, don't do it. And you're doing it anyway, calling somebody rabbi and father. And he said, don't do that. Then you want to call somebody your reverend. Who are you giving reverence to other than God? The person you call in reverend know the scriptures that says you're not to give reverence to anyone else other than God. And he's allowing you to call him reverend. What the flying fart? Jesus says all of you are brothers. People, stop. Stop. Ladies and gentlemen, let this be the year that you do what you have to do, not the year that you keep following tradition. Stop doing things because it's the tradition. Stop with all this holiday stupidity. You don't even know what you're doing. You all think that, oh, I'm only celebrating the holiday because of this, because you give yourself excuses for celebrating holidays. They're called holy days, ladies and gentlemen. These are religious celebrations. But I ain't religious. Well, it doesn't matter. Well, I ain't celebrating the holiday because it is. I'm doing it because, okay, then you're still doing it. You don't even get it. It's the substance. The substance is the reality. It doesn't matter what excuse you give yourself. I was just talking to somebody about excuses and reasons. He says, well, isn't a, a reason an excuse? No. An excuse is manufactured. A reason is reality. It's all about reality. Okay? A reason is reality. See, there's a reason why this happened. For instance, I told everybody before that wind went through Denver, I said, hey, those of you on the East Coast, y'all got a problem coming y'all way. I said, this wind right here, this wind is something else. I said that uh, several weeks ago. Next thing you know, we had that 200 mile tornado. Well, it was only 160, it doesn't matter, 200 miles, all right? Doesn't matter if it was 80 miles. It was way too long. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the fires that started in Denver, they claim was done by down power poles. They don't know. That was a guess. That's why they're now drawing back from that statement. They don't, because it was two separate fires, they don't know if it was intentional, if it was arson. They can't tell you. 
But I do know they're saying a thousand homes were damaged. Ladies and gentlemen, do you get that? A thousand homes? That's almost 10,000 people affected by that one incident. And the fire was still going on as of yesterday, but now they're going to get a couple of feet of snow. Yeah, yeah, that, I, that snow is coming for the rest of you. Please understand, and the temperature is about to plummet. I want you to get what's happening in Denver because some of you guys are not understanding Denver right now. Those people are homeless. It's snowing outside. Those people are suffering. Where are they going to get food? Where are they going to get shelter? Where are they going to get water? Where are they going to get clothing? And how are they going to get around? Most of them lost their vehicles. All destroyed. Yeah, of course, some of them had insurance, but not all of them did. Their lives are devastated because they done lost everything. All their paperwork, all of their proofs of this and proofs of that, everything is gone. All their computers where they kept all their codes and everything, all their passwords and everything. All that's gone, people. They didn't have time to pack any of that stuff up. That thing came at 100 miles an hour. Can you imagine a fire moving at 100? Well, the winds were only 100 miles an hour. That means the fire is moving 100 miles an hour. That's why the people were running for their lives. That's why the police were saying, head as far east as possible. The winds were blowing east. Should he not have been saying, head as far southeast as possible? Technically, I would have gone northeast. Why would I have gone northeast? Because the winds were blowing southeast. So I'm heading northeast away from the winds and on top of them, not underneath them. That means if I go southeast, the fire is chasing me. If I go east, the fire is chasing me. But if I go northeast, couldn't go west. The winds are coming from the west. Thought you said they were coming from the northeast. No. I said they were blowing southeast. But they're coming from the west. Because they came from California. And Washington and Oregon. So you guys are going to have a real hard problem over the next couple of weeks. Because this cold front that's coming through, it is cold. Now, it's not too cold right now because it was cooler two weeks ago. We were 29 degrees here. It was cooler two weeks ago. But this cold right now is the bone-chilling cold. I don't even have on the heater right now. It's 5 o'clock in the morning. It's 5 o'clock in the morning. I'm just getting in. I knock on the door. No, 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 no. A boy sweep low said, who is it? Okay, sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, now that we know this whole process, they created a way because you can't just have people to invent something and not give you a way out. There must be a remedy. So they created prima facie and presumption and gave you a right to challenge that stupidity. You have the right to challenge it. So let me show you guys. Let me show you something. Let's see. I'm going to pause y'all for a second. Give me a second. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is the document on the constitutional challenges. Okay, we, we're changing it up. We're, we're, I have somebody working on the style, so you won't have all that red. They, don't, they didn't like that red. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, lodgement of my right to bring forth constitutional challenges. Don't know why I said lodgement, but what, what do you do when you lodge? plan to be there for the night so you you stand upon your rights secured right of the people you're saying I'm one of the people mother and then you bring now what happens is you see all these rights right here what I do down here is I take all of those rights and I put them and I explain them all the way to O. Oh, no all the way to O. oh no all the way to O. see that's J and that's L M limo and that's O L M O. Okay. Elemental. Mental? Okay. I want y'all to pay attention. Here are the challenges. Statutes in their application. Well, it's supposed to be in their application. But anyway, presumption of law and prima facie evidence. Both neither one of them legal. Well, technically, they are legal. Legal means statutory. Lawful means constitutional. 
policies and procedures, rules of the court, that junk right there doesn't apply to you because it doesn't apply to them. They have a way out. You don't. So that makes it unconstitutional because the law is supposed to apply equally. The right to challenge. Everyone has the right to challenge a statute. You have the right to challenge a statute, and any challenge to the statute is a challenge to the court's jurisdiction. Because if the court does not have subject matter, statutory jurisdiction, that's what subject matter is, that's statutory jurisdiction. If the court does not have statutory jurisdiction, then the court does not have jurisdiction. So a challenge to the statute is a challenge to the court's jurisdiction. That's what you need to know. Misapplication of sovereign immunities doctrine. See, these idiots say that they can do whatever they want to and they're immune. That's a lie, ladies and gentlemen. Because the law says they're only immune when they're doing their job, when they're doing their duty. Well, if they've taken an oath that nullifies or if they act outside the scope of their duties, in other words, violate your secured constitutional rights, they're called secured constitutional rights. Constitution didn't give you a right. They only secured those rights that were yours by right, then they violated the law. Definition of the supreme law of the land. This explains how Congress mandated in the 1800s that every state's constitution must carry with it a Bill of Rights that mirrors the Bill of Rights for the United States of America. The Bill of Rights is the supreme law of the land. That's why every state must have that supreme law of the land written in its constitution. That's the supreme law of the land. You don't believe me? Read the document because it explains it. The rules of the court. How See that rules of the court junk? Rules of the court. Them things ain't for you. You ain't supposed to be following all that mundane stuff, that technical bibble bobble. Then the court style manual. Put my name in all caps. Who gave you permission to put my name in all caps? Uh-uh. Law of capitalization? You can't do that. Then we put the government printing office manual that speaks about only corporations' names are supposed to be in all caps. That is a government executive office policy. Well, the clerk of the court is part of the executive office. Interesting, isn't it? The policies of having officers of the court maintaining a status of two capacities, two branches of government, can't be part of the executive branch and the judicial branch. So how are you making them officers of the court? You must be part of the executive branch then. This must be administrative court. You are administering justice. Oh, God, you've been telling us you're the administrative court all this time. Interesting, ain't it? The dual oath taking of public officials. We talked about that. The oath that nullifies. The denial of the protection of the Bill of Rights and its associated inalienable rights. You sitting up here taking away my rights. You don't get to take away my rights. Those are my secured rights. The challenge to the restrictions placed upon people respecting their right to challenge statutes is unconstitutional. They say you can only challenge a constitutional statute is unconstitutional. Huh? You said a constitutional statute is unconstitutional because they claim it's constitutional. You can only challenge it as unconstitutional if you are directed, directly affected thereby. That's what they said. Guess what I'm going to say? Ladies and gentlemen, since all laws apply to everyone, since everyone is equal under the law, since the law says that ignorance of the law is no excuse, since it applies to everybody, then you have a right to challenge every law because every law applies to you 24 hours a day. If, it, if you weren't directly affected by the law, then you would not be obligated to obey that law. So long as you are obligated to obey that law, you are directly affected by it. You can challenge it as unconstitutional. There's always a loophole. Then it's the right to challenge district jurisdiction. Everything's a district. Cities, district, uh, district, and, and villages are districts, and towns are districts, and, and counties are districts, and everything's a district, y'all. States are district. The district took over everything. Well, Congress is only allowed 10 square miles because the district is the permanent seat of government, but it is not the government. It's just where government sits. Ain't that interesting? And then the challenge to the unconstitutional requirement that prohibits a learned jury from interpreting the law. Every single case, the judge says, I will interpret the law and I'll tell you what the law says. Excuse me? If everybody's required to know the law, I don't need you to interpret the law to me. I'm supposed to know the law. 
Every jury is the judge of the case. They're supposed to know the law. But the judges are stepping in and telling the jury what the law is. Statutes are not law. That's what y'all need to pay attention to. These are the challenges. These are the challenges everybody and their grandmama gets to make. Look, ladies and gentlemen, we stopped at O because we didn't want to overdo it. Okay? This document is only eight pages long. It says nine. Eight pages because we talk about the spaces that don't count. Okay? Nine pages long, ladies and gentlemen. The one before this was 13. This is going to be condensed because we're taking out some words because it's, see, that's why I said nine pages because look at that whole half of the page ain't even done. And we're going to add a jurat to it so it can be notarized because you're putting your challenges on the record. I would say once we finish this document and we get it to you, I, once we finish this document and we get it to you, that you do the judicial complaint and you follow them at the same time, ladies and gentlemen. See, that's why I say, look at that. You see how short that is? That, that's eight pages, ladies and gentlemen. There's your verification. I'm a claimant and sentient person and not a legal fiction. And then you're going to sign it, ladies and gentlemen, in front of notary. Give you the boxes to click in. Okay? There you go. Get the box to click in. That's what we're doing for you. We, I don't, see, I'm going to have to work on this because I know you can't click on each of them. You can only click on one at a time. So you're going to have to manually click these. Sorry, just the way it is. You're going to have to print it up and manually click them. Just, I'm not finished with it yet. I got to figure out how to do that to make it, how to do that, how you do, how, how you do that there. Got to figure out how to take care of that for you. We're working on that. We will get this document together. It has taken me over a month to put that document together. What are y'all doing down there? All right. It has taken me over a month to put that together for you all. I went through several visions and revisions and visions and revisions of that document just to get it up for you. Get it up. There's no. Oh, I'm sorry. That was Prince. I apologize. Ladies and gentlemen. I know Get It Up is not the best song in the world. It just came to my mind. I don't listen to I don't listen to that song. I know what Prince what he was how freaky he was back then. Okay, but he wasn't freaky when he died. I just was talking to somebody talking about how he did not die of no fentanyl overdose. Of course Prince didn't die of a fentanyl overdose. I don't care if they did claim that his friend came by and saw that he had overdosed. I don't care if somebody pumped him full of drugs. Okay? Prince was one of Jehovah's Witnesses, ladies and gentlemen. You don't become a Jehovah's Witness because you show up, show up in some court and say, I want to get baptized. No, baptism is a process. It took Prince years to qualify for baptism. Okay? Why? Because he has to get his life in harmony or in line with Scripture. Jehovah's Witnesses, as an organization, are very serious because the Bible is very serious about that. You don't just become a servant of God because you feel like it. You you, you woke up one morning and said, I'm going to serve God. Please, you have to have your life in harmony with scriptures. If Prince was still doing drugs, I assure you, Larry Graham, the one who studied with Prince, would have more than recognized it because they were best friends. So there is no way on this planet Prince was doing drugs at the time of his death. Well, he had all these back pains. You see how they already had the excuse made up for why he was doing so-called drugs? They told you he was doing drugs and why he did it. Nobody asked him. Well, he was dead. How could they ask him? Because they decided to take him out. Why? Because Prince was now having a... Do you see the type of pull Prince had? He was down telling people about chemtrails. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't realize that that's what's making people sick, I, I told you from day one that Ebola was airborne. Do you now know that they have Ebola in China right now at the same time as Corona? In the same city that they're having an outbreak of Ebola, hemorrhagic fever, and Corona, COVID, at the same time? I told you what will happen if those two things joined together and mixed. You all need to understand, I'm not nobody's prophet, but I told you. Nobody told me about the two mixing. I just thought about the worst case scenario. And right now in China, in Xi'an, 
let's do a YouTube, shall we? Let's do a YouTube. Let's do a YouTube. Let's do a YouTube. Look at that. A one hour video taken five hours to upload. That is amazing. YouTube must really like me. <laughs> uh, give me one second. This is the video I was doing yesterday talking about how anyone who kills more than three people, well, more than two people, sorry, are deemed to be serial killers. So they have this guy that they keep saying he's a serial killer because if they claim he killed one guy five years ago, another guy two years ago, another guy three years ago, and he's a serial killer. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the definition of a gang member. That's the definition of a mafia boss. That's what that is. You notice how all the people being accused here are black? <laughs> okay, sorry, apologize. Uh, we're going to go E-B-O-L-A and C-O-V-I-D and C-H-I-N-A. Yay! Let's see what we get, mama. Because y'all need to pay attention. This was a year ago. Nobody cares about a year ago. Nobody cares about a year ago. China, highest number of daily COVID cases since the Wuhan outbreak. And when you go and you listen to this report, they're going to talk about what does Wuhan coronavirus compare to SARS? We don't care about the comparison. We care about this story right here, ladies and gentlemen. 13 million people on lockdown. Look at that. It even tells you 13 million people on lockdown. If you listen to the report, they'll talk about COVID and Ebola happening at the same time. They, they say they have a yearly outbreak of this uh, Ebola-like fever. Please remember the very same name they gave to that is the very same name they give to this one. Okay? It's a so-called fever associated with blood, like Ebola. I'm looking to see if there are any other articles. So let's do this. I'm going to click on the DW. Uh, DW is not a bad source of news, ladies and gentlemen. DW, not a bad source of news. We're going to go here just for a second, and we're going to conclude this video. Okay, just for a second now. Who warns of a tsunami of COVID? I don't see any more about China. Look, Taiwan's president warns Beijing. How can Taiwan's president warn Beijing? And staying in China, the country has recorded its fourth rise in new coronavirus cases in a row. That's despite some 13 million people already under lockdown in the country's Shanxi province. The spike in cases there has produced China's highest infection rates since the pandemic's very first outbreak in Wuhan. It's been it's almost been two almost years two since years China has China seen the streets, streets of major, major cities deserted. deserted. But, once, but again, once again, millions, millions are back are under, back lockdown. under lockdown. Authorities, Authorities widened, the widened the restrictions across Shanxi province, province on Tuesday, on Tuesday as, they as they grapple with the country's, the country's biggest, biggest outbreak, outbreak since the initial months of the pandemic. Of the pandemic. China has China pursued has a zero-tolerance zero approach, approach, rolling out rolling mass out testing mass and draconian, draconian lockdowns, lockdowns for relatively, relatively small, small outbreaks. outbreaks. In Shanxi's Shanxi capital, capital city of Xi'an, 13 million, 13 million residents are under strict stay-at-home stay orders. orders. After a report... Hold on. If you want to remember that city, Xi'an, just remember Eon with an S. Xi'an. Okay? That's the city with both diseases at the same time. That's why China are taking these steps right here. They have two diseases happening at the same time. I believe this is the same thing that went on in Wuhan. Remember when they started at Wuhan? They talked about it a little bit. Then next thing you know, it was everywhere. Well, y'all need to do some research in this. Reporting less than 200 daily infections. We have quickly adopted containment measures for these risk areas. The implement Dr. Falsi in his female form. Implementation of various measures will help to effectively control the outbreak. Despite administering almost 3 billion jabs, initial research shows the locally produced Sinovac offers limited protection against the Omicron variant. The Beijing, the Beijing Winter Olympics, Olympics are set to start in just over a, just over a month, month, with only spectators from mainland China permitted to attend. 
With diplomatic boycotts already being announced, Beijing will be eager to ensure that COVID outbreaks don't further chill the already frosty atmosphere. Chill and frosty? Did you hear that? Chill and frosty? Oh, that is so... That is so... Oh, whatever. For more, let's uh, bring in correspondent Fabian Kreshmer in Beijing. Uh, Fabian, the numbers uh, bear repeating 13 million people in lockdown for less than 200 daily infections. How are Chinese citizens coping with such uh, tough measures? Well, I mean, the general um, uh, public are supporting those measures mostly, and the reason is that in most parts of China right now, you can live a relatively carefree, um, normal life without um, restrictions. However, the people who are affected by the zero COVID strategy, namely the citizens of Xi'an who are really under a strict lockdown, they cannot even leave their house uh, right now. They are relying on um, uh, neighborhood committees to send them uh, food and daily necessities. They are making a lot of sacrifices. Sacrifices. And if you scroll through um, social media, for example, Weibo, which is the uh, dominant um, online platform here, you can find uh, signs of discontent. For example, people complaining that they're running out of daily necessities and that there are no new supplies. However, um, most of the post... He's got to go so that you guys get it, so that you guys understand it. That's coming here. Pay attention to this so that you guys get it. Not just COVID, but another mysterious disease has put a whole Chinese city on lockdown. This seven days ago. Please understand, there are two diseases at the same time. I told y'all what happens when, pay attention so that you get it. What, this is Sion, Sion. What happens when COVID meets up with Ebola? You heard me say it. I ain't hear nobody else talk about COVID and Ebola. And if you look up Ebola, it's still going on in Africa. It ain't just China. So this is how you get those stories, okay? This is how you get that. Now they wanna focus on Ebola, the Omicron virus. But ladies and gentlemen, I want y'all to, not just COVID, but another mysterious disease, go here, listen to this story, and then follow it from there. It ain't mysterious. They call it mysterious, it ain't mysterious. China claims that this happens yearly, impossible. Impossible if it happened yearly, how come they don't have a cure for it or a regimen for it? They don't. This is on purpose. The same as it came here the last time. Hey, 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 I was right about Omicron. Before they even gave it a name, you heard me say that they were going to do exactly what they're doing now. Now I want you to see, I told you this over well, technically, over a year ago, I've been saying this to people. I've been saying it since 2013 that this is what they were going to do, especially when Ebola was out. And I kept telling everybody I was checking on Ebola because I knew Ebola was going to be something else. Well, here's the thing. COVID and Ebola coming together. Who's going to stop that? What, what vaccine is going to stop that? And do you know how they compare the Chinese vaccine to Pfizer and Moderna? Here's the point. If the Chinese vaccine didn't work, how come they have fewer cases than any other place in the world? Okay, but that's what they did, okay? Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get back to this video so that we can conclude this so that you guys will know. In this video right here, the one that's uploading now, we explain at the very, towards the middle of that video to the end, we explain what the administrative process is and how the administrative process was designed for you. The administrative process was designed for you. Why? The administrative process, ladies and gentlemen, was... Oh, this video, technically, it's taken almost 12 hours to upload. Anyway, this, the administrative process was designed for you because it requires notice. Because you receive notice, you have the right to rebut whatever issue. that you have. A, a rebuttal is a challenge, ladies and gentlemen. You have the right to challenge. It's built in a statute doesn't matter what case you receive, I would take that document, fit it to your case, and file it. And look, if it was a criminal case, you get to appeal it. Now, I just petitioned the court, they accepted my petition, then they dismissed my petition. And I did an appeal. Do you know they've ignored my appeal, even though I have an appeal by right? And so I'm just gonna go through the process. Now, that's just one case, because I'm keeping the Arizona case going. Them, them mother playing with me. And so, so is, uh, what you call it, uh, California. They're playing with me. 
I just got paperwork from the court that they knew that I was so-called impropria persona representing my own interests, speaking for my own self, and they ignored it. They had several hearings. Oh, look at that. It's 100% uploaded, and it's still going to take seven minutes, okay, because it's not finished uploading. It's 100% uploading, but it's not finished uploading. Then it has to process. That's going to be another 15, 20 minutes, just so that y'all know. But anyway, I appealed the case, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, now it's another three minutes. And they're denying me. They had several hearings without me being present. They went through those hearings. They had a stand-in attorney representing me when I was supposed to represent myself. I didn't hire no other attorney. I didn't ask them for no other attorney. And they proceeded with those hearings, keeping me in jail for weeks, knowing exactly where I was documenting is in custody. Excuse me. If the case was overturned, I was out on my own recognizance. How come I wasn't released immediately? Is what I was saying. But they kept me in there because they wanted to punish me. So I'm going after them. They're ignoring me, saying I don't have a right to an appeal. Really? Who told you that? Let me explain to you who got a right and who don't have a right. You don't tell me what my rights are. Ladies and gentlemen, nobody on this planet gets to tell me what my rights are. Those are mine. They belong to me as a result of me being me. You don't give me a right. The nation of America doesn't give me a right. I exercise my rights. Nobody gives me the right to exercise my right. Do you not know that's what the First Amendment is all about? The First Amendment is the right that secures your right. They can't make a policy or a law that abrises your right. And that's the First Amendment. So, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, we're taking the time to let you know that some of you, this is the year of perseverance. Some of you are going to understand the information. Some of you are going to act upon it. Some of you are not going to understand. So let's break it down for you so you get it. Are you tired of these companies treating you wrong? Just yes or no. So if you're tired of it, find a contract that fits your situation, fill it out. All you got to do is fill it out, put your situation in the contract, ask them the questions, and send it to them. That's all you have to do. It doesn't cost you anything other than the stamp and the time to fill it out. Send it to them. Document your debt. Document your debt. Ladies and gentlemen, then take the notice of fault opportunity to cure. Send it to them 10 days later because they're not going to send you the paperwork you're asking for. The document already has the documentation you need. See, everybody's supposed to know the law, so they're supposed to know statutes are not law. They're supposed to know that there is no money in the United States. That's right. They're supposed to know that lawful money is credits. And that the lawful money of the United States comes from the people, not from the government. The full faith and credit of the United States come from the people, not from the government. They're supposed to know these things. So, ladies and gentlemen, if they're supposed to know these things, how come they're not following these things? Exactly. So... It's your job. Do you understand me? You do the contract. You send a notice of fault, opportunity to cure. Now, that's just your paperwork. That's what the arbitration process is all about. Now you have a third witness, a judicial officer, confirm your claim. Now, you don't need to get a third witness, a judicial officer, to confirm your claim. But remember, that third witness judicial officer is recognized by their statute and by common law. And you get their certified document. And you take all your documentation, proof of service, all that, six months later, and you just file your taxes and you write that off. By the end of next year, you will be getting a refund. See, I told you, it's going to be 20 minutes before it uploads completely. Because there ain't no music in the video, but it says it's checking. Ain't no music. But the algorithm, 
that Google has created is checking the words as well, making sure I don't use words like insurrection or matrix. You know, it's making sure that I don't say certain things. And look at that. It says date uploaded January 1st. Ladies and gentlemen, I did this video on the 31st. I even said at the very beginning, it's the last video of the year. And they put the date today, the date published because it took them 12 hours. Because I said it was going to be my last video of the year. See, December 30th and January 1st. It's like I didn't do anything the 31st. Uh, I told y'all when I started this video, I was asleep at about 8.15. So there ain't no way on this planet I was up at somebody's midnight. You feel me? Because there ain't no need. I don't need to stay up till midnight. Midnight is not how I judge my days. Okay? Midnight, the first of every year. I can't tell you what I've done the first of every year since probably the 80s. I mean, no, the 90s. There was, uh, I used to go, as I told people in the past, I used to go to Hollywood Boulevard along the parade route for the, uh, the Pasadena Parade, you know. And I used to go along that route because people would camp up all night and they would wait for the parade route to be first in line for the parade. And we would go along that line and we would talk to all the families and the people, me and my peoples, me and my boys, and we would have a good time. Literally, we would joke, laugh, play around. It wasn't, it, when I did it the first year, I just needed some place to go. I wanted to pick some place to go and we went there and we saw all the people and we said, all right, let's stop here and let's get out. And it became a tradition. We did it every year and literally had a good time. We would joke, we would walk, we would talk. And we would talk to the people, and then we would go home. That was it. That was New Year's. That's what I used to do. Now, I don't do no stupid New Year's. It's just another day. Just another day, chilling in the hood. Just another day around the way. I'm feeling good today. Feeling crazy. Yay! Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it really is just another day. But make this the year of perseverance. Don't just stop. Don't just give up. You see how Google wants to slow uploading my videos, taking all kind of years. Oh, look at that. It's up. The video's up. It already has two people viewing it. The video is up. It's still processing in HD. Ladies and gentlemen, as I told you, and I'll continue to tell you, I will persevere. Everything that I've been through, I'm still here. Everything they put me through, I am still bringing it to their attention. I'm not letting nothing go. I'm telling you, you need to persevere. But you don't persevere with attitude. No, 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 no. Persevering with attitude gets you nowhere. See, I told you, less than an hour. And it took 12 hours. This video is over an hour. And watch, it only take about an hour and a half to upload. That's going to be the most that this one will upload. Okay? <sighs> That video also explains what we've been doing at SACOM. The, I, I'm sorry, I found something that I've been looking for. And the only problem is I already knew it. I just didn't have the actual code code. I had the code sometime in the past, but forgot where it was. I found it by mistake. Got the code, ladies and gentlemen. And that code is the thing that you really want to know. That's the code that allows you to do the money orders. That's the code that literally says that the court can't challenge the money order or the validity of the money order. And no, I can't give it to you. Because when I was looking it up, it was a SACOM project. And so I have a non-compete clause with SACOM. When I give SACOM something, it stays with SACOM. So I can't tell y'all what makes the money orders work. And I'm not joking with you. You have no idea how giddy I was. Go back and listen to the beginning of that video and see how I'm reacting in the what's new at SACOM. Telling you how I found that at the end of the year. We're going to be creating an entire part of the organization. They're going to be separate from SACOM, but a part of SACOM. Huh? That don't make no sense. Don't worry about it. These are the new people we're bringing in. We put out the fillers for people to be a part of this. And nine people applied. We only accepted five of the nine. Okay. We gave you an opportunity to be a part of something that no one else is doing. 
but we are doing it as an organization. We are doing it as an organization. We're processing everything that needs to be done right now. We're taking care of all of our SAP packers. We made all of our SAP pack. Well, we didn't make it. They were already an organization. They were already members of the organization. They already have stock in the organization. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, there are only 5,000 shares in SACOM. The SAP packers have a 0.0001% stock in the organization. There are only 5,000 shares in the organization, okay? A point zero 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 no, it's zero zero one percent is to the 100th. So 5,000 and you add a triple zero to that, that means 5 million shares. That means each person has one share. But if we made it 500,000 shares, do you feel me? I said 5 million shares. If we made it 500 million shares, each person would have 5 shares. We go from 1 to 5. So that's the ratio. So the shares in the company is their individuals will receive their stock. They'll receive their stock certificates. We're working on all of that for you. Do not contact SACOM about this information because you will not get a response. I am just letting you know what we're working on. You don't get to say, hey, I heard you working on this. Where's mine? 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 Because that's what people do for whatever reason. These are securities. These securities take five years to mature. We started in 2017, November. We're not even at five years yet, people. Five years is the end of this year. 2022 we are advancing or bringing forward or accelerating the maturity date stop trying to control that that's not your job we told you pay attention we were creating securities we were helping you to gain control and access to your infant estate your infant estate the way you gain access is you create securities. You take control of your securities. We are giving you tax credits. You are acquiring tax credits. Tax credits are lawful money backed by the full faith and credit of the government. Backed by the full faith and credit of the federal government. These are not state taxes. These are federal taxes. Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. The Securities Acquisition Trust Commission. We are following the law. Many of you want us to skirt the law only for your benefit. Not going to happen. I do these videos. I put the information out there. Many of you don't listen to the entire video. That's on you. Because we take the time to give you all the information necessary. We had a SACOM YouTube channel. And Google did not appreciate it. We said what we were doing. And Google and the system through the IRS has gone after every legal thing that SACOM has been doing and they have gotten rid of it. Okay? Had a PayPal account under SACOM. And what did Google do? Google took down our PayPal account. Why? Why is Google so powerful? Because Google is Skynet. I've been saying that for years. Google is Skynet. Google is the Wizard of Oz. The all-powerful wizard. Don't, don't email me talking about this. I don't need your assistance in understanding it. Okay? Just understand that I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. That's all you got to do is understand. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this is me letting you know that we are actively working to benefit you. We tell you the SAP packs are designed to create tax credits they are designed to create tax credits especially the current sad pack the prime a person gets a million dollars in tax credits the tax credits are not newly created tax credits the tax credits are tax credits that already exist go ahead and read what's on the site the tax credits already exist you are not creating these tax credits you are not creating new debt the tax credits already exist 
They've already been established. The only thing we're doing is transferring those credits to you. We're following the law. Some of you are going to understand it because you've done your research. Those of you who don't understand it, I can't help that. It's not my job to explain it because I've already explained it. I've been explaining it for a year. Every time they put me on vacation, all I've been doing is studying. While you guys are out here doing all this stuff, I've been to college. I've had people send me what I needed to research, to study. And while everybody else was sitting up there plotting and scheming and looking at TV and talking about nothing, I was studying. I considered it as me going to college. Yes, I went to high education. That's why I could tell you in that arbitration video that the law does not require you to get your awards confirmed. But I knew that before. No, what I had not fully grasped is that the law simply says that they only have 90 days to challenge the arbitration award. If they don't challenge the arbitration award in 90 days, the award is valid. There's nothing any court can say. They lose jurisdiction. And they know it. And they want to start an investigation on SACOM two years ago to try to stop them, to intimidate them from doing this? Well, now we know why they were doing it. Now we know why they went after SACOM. But they can't stop it. Ladies and gentlemen, SACOM was originally started in 2012, in the month of June. And now, here we are, 2022, 10 years later, and SACOM is still here? After COVID, everybody else, so many companies went out of business? Ladies and gentlemen, here we are, 2022, two years since the pandemic, quote, quote unquote, officially started. We have two more months, and it'll be the date since the United States officially announced a national emergency. But two years since it officially started, and SACOM is still here, still here working for you. How many other organizations can say that? Thank you. And what we've done, we've not done anything for ourselves. We have put you first. Well, it doesn't seem like you put us first. Look at all this. Guess what? If it doesn't seem like we put you first, how come we're still doing it? How come we're still working to help you? How come we're still processing all the paperwork? How come we're still processing the bonds? How come we're still doing our private securities? Yes, that comments a private securities organization. You have invested in private securities. Go ahead and look up what a private security is, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we're doing. We have so many organizations that are trying to do what we're doing and they don't get it. They're not able to do what we're doing because they don't have the knowledge. They're trying to copy us. And it's okay because I told people, take what we're doing and do it yourself. So they're trying to copy us, but they don't have all the information. We have so many people talking about giving people tax credits. Go right ahead, give people tax credits. But you, God, go back and pay attention to the last video, what's new at SACCOM, and then understand how tax credits are generated. Do that so that you'll understand what you're doing. Because if you don't create the tax credits the correct way, they are invalid. You're doing nothing. You're spinning your wheels, and you're going to end up getting yourself in trouble. Because remember, this is a federal thing. This is not a state thing. That's why we're taking our time, dotting T's, crossing I's, and then slashing X's out of the way. Okay? That's what we're doing, because you can't have an X without a slash. Now look, ladies and gentlemen, it's been an hour and 19 minutes that I've spent talking to you. And initially, I was just wanting to do a recap of the last four videos. The reason why there was a recap, because... I am strongly suggesting that you go back, take a look at this video, take a look at this video, take a look at this video, take a look at this video. Why? Because those four videos, that's why I keep showing this screen. These last four videos prior to this video, December 29th, 30th, and the so-called first, those videos explain to you 
exactly, pay attention, ladies and gentlemen, what you need to know to get your tax credits, to get everything going. That greatest arbitration video explains exactly what arbitration is, what it isn't, how to go about taking care of arbitration, and how Bradley Christopher Stark, what they came up with, gave us our way out. We needed a way to enforce our contracts. Arbitration clauses were the way to enforce the contracts. But they're not doing anything. You're not worried about them doing anything. You're worried about the tax credits that's created. Because why? How do you make them do something? Well, you send them the 1099B. When you do the 1099C, you send them the 1099C with the B form attached to that. You give them their copy. They're responsible for the taxes. So if you have a judgment for $2 million, what's the taxes on $2 million? They're responsible for the taxes, ladies and gentlemen. They're going to pay one way or the other. And the IRS, the IRS has no authority to ignore your tax credits. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have, let's say I have $1 billion in tax credits, and I do. Well, no, I actually, as a person, because I gave away all my tax credits, with the exception of right now, we, we got $60 million tax credits. So I have $60 million in tax credits. So let's say I get a judgment from a court, and that judgment is for $70,000. Okay, I just give the court a $70,000 bond. Ladies and gentlemen, tax credits can be converted to bonds. If you have a tax credit bond backed by your tax credits that you can document, guess what? You pay off everything with a bond backed by your tax credits. Oh, my stars? You mean to tell me I can pay off all my bills, my house note, and everything with a tax credit bond? You better believe you can. You better believe you can. That's what these videos are trying to show you. You become tax exempt. You have no more debt after this. You pay everything. Can I buy something with it? If you do the paperwork correctly, of course you can. Companies do buy and trade and sell taxes all the time. I just can't talk to you guys about that part. That's the SACOM thing. That's the new company we're putting together at SACOM, doing exactly what I just talked to you guys about. Don't you pay attention? That's what we're doing, ladies and gentlemen. I am now proving everything for the reason why we created the securities acquisition. We are acquiring securities. We are a trust organization and we have a commission. The Securities Acquisition Trust Commission, otherwise known as SACCOM. See? Securities Acquisition Trust Commission. Don't even focus on the Security Investment Trust Commission. Our defrauded homeowners of America you guys are getting the same thing. We got your back. We got your back. I will be putting some very special people on the Defrauded Homeowners of America paperwork. We'll be doing that this week. We are getting it together. We will definitely try to get this all done way before tax season. I know you want to file your taxes now. I know, I know you want to leave me. But I refuse to let you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you can still file your taxes. You'll just have to file an amended tax statement afterwards, once you receive it. We had to assign all the numbers before the 31st. That was our crunch time. That was our main focus. Why? Because it had to be done next year. If we didn't do it next last year, it had to be done next year. It had to be done last year. Yesterday. If we didn't do it by yesterday, which is why I spent over 12 hours doing what I did yesterday. If it didn't get done yesterday, you wouldn't be able to do it until the end of this year. That's why it was done on the 31st, so it could be the previous tax year. So all the taxes have already been assigned. Yay! Now we're going to send you your documentation. Okay? Be patient. Do not ask us, when am I going to get it? I've been waiting all this time. You do that. And I promise you, you have my word. I'm the CEO. You'll be violating our policies. You'll be violating the terms of the agreement. And if you have a problem, you better look at the arbitration clause that's on the terms and conditions of the website. When I say don't do it, I am not joking with you. You're not going to put pressure on myself, nor are you going to put pressures on that organization. We have a five-year issue. We are voluntarily accelerating it. If you want to violate policy and do what you want to do, then we will put you back on that five-year plan. We won't accelerate anything, and we will notify you of that. And there will be nothing you can do to change that. 
So when we say do not contact us regarding this until we notify you that it is ready, then don't contact us regarding this. You're wasting our time answering such emails. You're going to have to pay attention to this site. I am not SACOM. SACOM is not me. I am the CEO of my corporation, but this is being done separate and apart from SACOM, which is why you hear me say, I cannot tell you certain things because of my contract with SACOM. But I am the founder. I can talk about what my organization is doing, the same as Elon Musk can talk about certain things his organization is doing. We are not trading stock publicly. So when I tell you something, I am not violating any securities laws. And they're going to eventually try to come at us for violating securities laws. It's a good thing that our stocks, our bonds, our organization is not under the SEC. Really? Y'all not under the SEC? You had better believe we're not. We don't trade publicly. These are private securities, private stocks. See, they're trying to figure out all kind of ways to stop me from doing what I'm doing for you all. They're trying to figure out all kind of ways to stop me from telling you all what I'm telling you. And I promise you, the last four videos is the information they don't want you to have. Go back, listen, pay attention. If it's a commercial crime, there must be a commercial remedy. You have a right to challenge everything that's going on in the courtroom. That's what we've done there. Then the arbitration process is how you get your act right, your corrections of everything. And remember, if you're going to do the complaints, if you're going to do the challenges, fill out the criminal complaint and attach it to your stuff and send it. All you gotta do with the criminal complaint is give it to a magistrate. If they don't process it, ladies and gentlemen, give it to the attorney general. If the attorney general doesn't pick it up, guess what you get to do? You get to send me that notification of that first page and of any notification of them saying, we ain't accepting this, or you send me notification, pay attention, that you sent it to them and they didn't respond. And then I go in to the Attorney General like we did with the Defrauded Homeowners of America lawsuit. I go in and we go from there. Remember, the Defrauded Homeowners of America lawsuit, all of the Attorney Generals didn't come together until we filed our notification that we were representing all of America and how the banks were defrauding them. And all of a sudden, all of the attorney generals decided to come together in their separate lawsuits and bring in, join in all together with the attorney general of the United States and then settle for $26 billion. And I should be going after my quote unquote pay attention whistleblower funds. But I have to put together the letter for the attorney general letting them know, hey guys, Y'all owe me a percentage. They're going to say, we don't owe you nothing. Be like, y'all settled for $26 billion. I was doing a lawsuit. I told you that we were doing a lawsuit. Told you it was a Q-Town lawsuit. You told me that y'all were doing it. Okay, there was a settlement. Where's my money? Eventually, I will take care of that. But for right now, I'm not interested in that. I, I don't need that right now. I don't need it. I'll go for it later, but right now I don't need it. I have what I need. I So I gave everything away to you all. It's all included in the SAT packs. That's where the credits are coming from. Like I said, none of my arbitration awards have ever been contested by anyone. No one has ever challenged it. Not a single award has ever been challenged by anyone. Well over a year. Yay. So I'm not here to try to prove anything regarding what I've done because I already have the proof. I already have the documentation. I already have exactly what the IRS says I need to have. That's what I'm trying to get you to have. You know what I'm saying? To have, to have. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for letting me bring this information to your attention. Hopefully it won't take, now this is an hour and 29 minutes hour and 30 minutes actually hopefully it won't take 18 hours for this video to upload now i gotta go uh i'm gonna go lay down for a couple more minutes i'm not tired i'm just gonna go lay down it's six o'clock in the morning 
and I'm just getting in. Anyway, and we will talk soon. Take care of yourselves, everybody, and your perseverance.